Tesla's AI roadmap. First, RoboTaxis, and then the Optimus humanoid robot, according to Tasha Keeney and the boys at ARK Invest. Uh, thank you for joining us last week, Tesla's earnings calls. Exciting, as always. A lot of people very excited coming off the call. Uh, not included in that group would be most traditional financial analysts, uh, but retail investors and uh, people on X. So can you kind of break down why such a big divide between TradFi uh, and everyone else and what you took away from the call. Sure. So o- overall, um, even though the results missed expectations, we saw the stock appreciate. And it seems like it's largely um, because of, of what we've been excited about over the past five to 10 years, which is the really, we should call it the AI opportunity now, but it's kind of all encompassing. It's it's autonomous driving. It's then moving on to humanoid robots. Um, you know, originally it was Tesla as a software company versus just an automaker. Um, so the narratives evolved a bit, but... Evolved a bit is an understatement. I first began buying Tesla stock early 2016, prior to the unveil of their more affordable vehicle, which was eventually unveiled as the Model 3. Later that same year, Tesla made their intent clear. They will solve autonomy. This has got to be a massive deal. Many years later, Tesla announces their intent to build a useful, increasingly capable and competent humanoid robot, essentially transplanting the brain of FSD from the vehicles into the bot to get a massive head start. When I first began investing in Tesla stock in early 2016, believe me, humanoid robots were not on my radar. Disrupting the global labor market hadn't even occurred to me. Back then, I had a 10-ish year investment horizon, couldn't really see much further into the future than that. I figured they're going to dominate electric vehicles, Model S in 2012 winning every award ever was proof of concept. The next gen vehicle's coming soon, this is going to be fucking epic, led by Musk, this is going to be brilliant. And what was originally an investment in a company that would dominate electric vehicles, and soon after became evident they're going to kill it with autonomy, has now become an investment in a company seemingly set to have an astronomical run over the next few decades. The Optimus Humanoid Robot going to utterly dwarf not just Tesla's vehicle business, not just their energy storage business, but also their autonomy business. There is a reason I'm still buying Tesla stock, and it ain't electric vehicles. Uh, You know, Elon and the executive team have been very focused on launching autonomous ride hail, and we got more detail on the call. Um, So we heard that they they plan to launch in Austin uh, in June this year. So that's pretty huge. So Nick, I know your opinion has changed about this in the past, say nine minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think? You know, e- Elon said it before, uh, you know, we're going to launch commercially. We're going to launch, we're going to launch. Now he's saying June, Austin, robo taxi. Um, what's your take? Yeah, I'm glad you asked my take, considering you two are the experts. I feel like I should be asking both of you. But, uh, you know, and hearing the work you guys have done, obviously, I think RoboTaxi is a huge business long term. I think I'm probably less optimistic in terms of the timeline to reach scale than maybe, you know, you two, but I don't follow the company as closely. So I defer to the experts here, but I, like, I still have, I, and I brought it up on this show before, like I have questions around, you know, how do you change over the cars? How do you charge them? Like it's an entirely different vehicle platform. You need to work out the kinks. So like in terms of reaching scale, having it be a meaningful business, especially when you're going to go toe to toe with Waymo and some of the other competitors, like there's probably more questions for me than for you two. But again, you cover the name. I just sit here and, and listen to to you two for the most part. Nice. Especially. I, have, I have a comment based on something that, that Nick said, which is I think that scale is a really interesting point here um, because the way that Tesla scales is just is really different than how Waymo scales. And, and that that I think should be discussed. So. All right, now we're getting to the juicy stuff. There's a few different pieces of the puzzle relating to Tesla autonomy and what they're doing, their point of difference between other companies, their unassailable data lead. One of the most important of all is Tesla's strategy for scaling, something that in retrospect, I'm sure many of the super smart analysts will say, well, of course, that was a great strategy. And it was obvious they were going to scale way faster than everyone else and go flying from supposedly in last place to taking the lion's share of the profits in autonomy. Of course, that was obvious. But right now, people don't seem to be talking about this. There are no other companies attempting to solve autonomy or already offering rideshare in quote-unquote robo-taxis anywhere on earth who will be able to scale a fleet of robo-taxis even close to as fast as Tesla. 
This is very important, as I've said in the past. Who gets to the finish line first? In autonomy is what matters. And when I say finish line, I mean having scaled a massive fleet of robo taxis essentially across the globe. Most so called experts, analysts in the finance media, and so on are focused on the current position just after the starter gun's gone off. No, look, Waymo's ahead. They're offering. Bro, who cares? Who gets to the finish line first? And that answer is extremely obviously Tesla. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So maybe this is where I defer. As a, so my one, you know, I guess. I do own a Tesla, right? And this idea that I'm going to opt my car into the network, I personally would probably not, unless there was something that was like truly meaningful. And I I still have quite like, there are little things that I just can't get pat. Like, how is the car going to open up my garage? How is it going to charge? Like there's things that to me still seem like hurdles, like in the grand scheme of things, they're obviously very little, right? Like you can fix all of this, but I think it still takes time to fix. That's why like the time period and, and the scale question to me is like, there's kinks and, and hurdles you need to work out as small as they may seem. It does take time to work those out and to, to convince people to hand over their car. Um, All right. Well, we're coming to Florida to show you how your Tesla can already open up your garage. Um, but <laughs> I will say that uh, so you're t- this is you're touching on even another point. So the, it's like, will they scale with customer cars? So they actually focused on the call on their internal fleet, which is how they plan to launch ride hail at first. Um, and we do believe that, you know, in the early days, uh, Tesla will own and operate the fleet. They're going to they have set they've signaled and said that over the long term, they're going to maintain some sort of small fleet. And then, um, you know, they're incentivizing third parties, other companies to um, basically buy Tesla's, put them on the network. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're relying on today's customers to do that. This could be this is like a business opportunity for third party companies. Um, the, the part of scale that I was going to touch on is slightly tangential to that, which is um, the way that Tesla scales is fundamentally different. So so Elon said that, OK, they're planning on launching Austin this year. Um, you know, many cities, hopefully by the end of the year, they'll have unsupervised activity. So that means that basically like FSD uh, full autonomy works. That's what unsupervised means. You don't have to monitor it as a driver. Um, and then nationwide next year. I mean, next year is when you as a customer would be able to sign your vehicle up for the platform. Gotcha. Um, but what does that actually mean? That That's, that's a, a capability uh, point, meaning that the software works in these geographies. So then it's like for Tesla, Launching becomes really more of like a logistics problem, which isn't nothing. I mean, you have to get a groundswell in cities. Um, you know, you have to get people to use the app, um, get on the platform, customer acquisition, all of that. There's probably some local regulation, even if autonomy moves um, to the federal level for regulation overall, um, some local ride hill regulation. But um, it's different than what Waymo does because for Waymo, they face when they expand it's both that logistics challenge and a technology challenge because they actually have to say, okay, now we're going to put cars in this area, start testing it. We're going to start putting cars on highways as they've done recently, for instance, start testing, um, you know, driver free, and then we'll launch. Whereas Tesla is like already doing all that R and D work with customers. Um, So at least like from a software perspective, the launch is a lot more seamless in the scale. Um, you can imagine, you can you can see how because of that format that again, like scaling for them is just a, is it they already have one step solved. They they only have to do this sort of like um, you know business logistics management step. Tasha rightly pointing out that in order for Tesla to launch their robo taxi service in a new city, there's one less step, and boy, is it a big, expensive, time consuming, laborious step, which is pre-mapping the entire area that you're going to be operating your robo taxis in, in high definition, down to the square inch, and a bunch of other bullshit and training just to get the service operating. Then there's the other bits and pieces as well, like actually making the vehicles, blah, blah, blah. Tesla doesn't need to worry about that because they've built a generalized solution. When the software is capable of driving safely in a city, Tesla could just produce some vehicles, bam, next minute, they have robo taxis in that city. And that's just integrating them on the Tesla ride hail service itself meaning it's going to be much more affordable, much cheaper, and much faster for Tesla to scale their service city by city by city by city. And on the logistics side, Tesla also released a video of the, uh, or more video of the cleaning robot uh, to be implemented. And I think 
you know, this is like a classic one of those, oh, but have you thought about how they're going to clean the cars? And it's like, if they... Bro, I swear, they're 100% trolling Nick here. Actually trolling a lot of the skeptics. I hear very often from the skeptics some form of, oh, but how are you going to... But have you thought about... But they're not going to be able to... Over and over. As if Tesla's really retarded and they just are full of brain-dead morons who wouldn't actually consider... Wait, what are all the things and steps involved and problems to solve in launching a massive fleet of robo taxis? Hate to break it to the skeptics, but bro, if you've thought about it, odds are Tesla's already thought about it and solved the problem. Just saying. If they clean these cars with a robot, Tesla cars are going to be far cleaner than the average Uber or taxi cab that you get into. And on the robotic side, right, another exciting point of the call, a lot of talk on Optimus. You know, we're far more conservative than Elon is um, on the ramp. So I just thought it was worth underscoring. Ark Invest saying out loud that they're far more conservative than Elon was. As far as I know, Ark's five-year Tesla fair valuation doesn't even include Optimus at all. Nothing to do with it. And they're still $2,600 per share 2029 fair valuation. And that's not including any Optimus. Uh, but he said, you know, they're... Internal ambitious goal is roughly 10,000 robots by the end of this year. So maybe they get to a few thousand or half of that uh, if they come up short and then kind of scaling an order of magnitude per year after that. Uh, although, you know, also noting that a uh, humanoid robot is a thousand times harder than the autonomous vehicle. Uh, but what makes it all possible is really the learnings, this real world AI. And I think another thing that ties into the kind of mismatch in expectations from traditional finance and everyone on the technology side is there does seem to be a weird dynamic where everyone's very excited about AI and then can't kind of cross the bridge to real world AI. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a very gentle way for Sam to point out how fucking brain dead many of these analysts are. It's true, right? There's a huge amount of hype about, quote, AI. Yeah. Yet you see what Tesla vehicles are doing with FSD supervised. And for some strange reason, many of these supposed experts just can't actually connect their dots and go, wait a minute. That's also AI. Holy shit. This is incredible. What Tesla vehicles are doing, how they're doing it. You got an optical based system, a bunch of cameras, FSD computer, and incredible real world capabilities. They don't need LiDAR. They're able to infer depth just like humans do with two eyes. Vehicle has more eyes because it can see in every direction. But it's the same thing. For Tesla vehicles to be doing what they're doing, FSD 13, the latest versions of this, we can see what's happening. It's stunning. Tesla isn't reliant upon pre-mapping in high definition. They don't need LiDAR. It's incredible. But as Sam points out, most folks, they just don't seem to be able to connect the dots and understand the incredible real-world AI Tesla has already on roads. Yet, they're simultaneously extremely bullish on AI in general. It's very strange. It's like everyone's so excited about DeepSeek and all of these models. And then like can't go the one step further to be like, yes, this means that like robo taxi at scale is right around the corner. And I think to me, that's like one of the most visceral disconnects in the market right now. Well, it could it could be different companies that are, you know, the, the companies of today that are great at software based AI may not be great at real world AI. And I think, I think that from an investor perspective, it's, um, it's, it's perceived as more risky because, because it's hardware based, like it becomes, you know, also a capital in, intensive endeavor. Um, of course, if you're a company like Tesla, that's, you know, less of an issue, right? Um, because they have cash that's coming off their um, electric vehicle line and they were, you know, smartly like one of the first companies to be profitable on EVs. And now they can use that to build these other businesses. Not everyone has that, that luxury. It's not just what Tesla has achieved with FSD, it's how they've achieved this. And the implications, you've got to join a few dots here. They have a generalized solution, millions of vehicles already on roads, expertise in manufacturing, extremely efficient, profitable electric vehicles at scale, and a data flywheel that no other company can replicate. It's literally not possible for any other company on the planet to click their fingers and suddenly have millions of vehicles on roads collecting data, let alone to have already accumulated the data from those millions of vehicles being on roads for previous years. This is in stark contrast to what is happening with large language models. All the hype right now, chat GPT, and even image generation, mid journey, blah, blah, blah. The critical ingredient to creating incredible AI with incredible capabilities is shit tons of data. 
You obviously need the compute as well. But you need all of these ingredients. Otherwise, you can't make the recipe. You need fuck tons of great high quality data and you need the training compute. But if you want to create a large language model, you have the entire open internet to scrape for language to train on. Image generation, same story. The internet is full of quintillions of petabytes, maybe slightly less, of images, of video to train on. So it should be expected that multiple companies, as long as they can get their hands on the training compute and a little bit of AI talent, can produce compelling large language models, compelling static image generation, and even compelling video generation by training on the open internet. But when it comes to real world AI, you need the real world data at scale to train. And it's simply not possible for any company at the drop of the hat to begin collecting data, even close to the scale that Tesla already is. And if you don't have the data, how the fuck do you train your AI? This is the dot I think most folks are not able to connect. Tesla has an unassailable data lead and there's no line item in the quarterly or annual financial reporting that puts a value on that data. But it's an enormous competitive advantage. So it's not just that folks seem to be super hyped about AI, as long as it's a language model or image generation, but can't seem to connect that to real world AI. It's that they don't seem to be aware that Tesla has an unassailable data lead with the real world AI. It's not going to be easy for another company to just magically catch up to Tesla because they don't have the open internet to train on because the open internet isn't real world data. The real world is where you collect the real world data. And in order to collect the real world data, you need physical objects in the real world, millions of them covered in sensors to collect said data. And Tesla's the only company that has that. And in order for another company to start collecting data at scale, they would need to spend hundreds of billions, if not a trillion plus dollars, putting hardware on roads. But you can't just instantly do that, even if you have the money. You actually need to manufacture the products and put them on roads. Why do people not see this? Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.